Hey, Boaz here with a pedal-powered talk show. We're here in Spearfish, South Dakota to talk with world-famous opera singer Johanna Meyer. Let's go, Phil. The Pedal Power Talk Show is a talk show on a bike, and you're watching it now. So I read that you made your debut on stage when you were five weeks old. Yes, that's true. Um, my family was uh, touring the United States uh, with the Black Hills Passion Play. My mother was playing Mary, and my father played the Christus. And, uh, um, mother played up until a few weeks before I was born and went back to Chicago, gave birth, and we rejoined the company, and I went on at five weeks. Wow. And so tell me about the Passion Play. The Passion Play was uh, a non-denominational production and covered the time from um, Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday through the crucifixion and the resurrection. This, of course, uh, is um, early childhood uh, backstage with the Passion Play. My father brought the uh, Passion Play to the United States from Germany in 1932, but decided that he wanted to stay in this country because uh, conditions in Germany and in Europe were deteriorating so badly. Uh, my father had been looking for a permanent um, place to um, make the Passion Play home. And so when he came to South Dakota, a group came from the Black Hills and asked him if he would come and look at some sites here. Uh, and in those days, this was uh, no man's land, really. It was one of those cases of, if I build it, they will come. And they did in the millions. And so how did you get so interested in opera? When we were on the road, we always listened to the Metropolitan Opera broadcasts as we drove along in the car. In fact, I gave an interview when I was four that said that I had planned to be an opera singer when I grew up. <laughs> and very unexpectedly, uh, we discovered that there was a voice there, and uh, so I quickly moved into that other world of opera. And as I was graduating from high school, I was entered in a competition, and I was the only high school student in the uh, vocal division, but I won and the prize was uh, a vocal scholarship to the University of Miami. So I started to study there, and within a year I had made my debut with the Miami Opera. This uh, is Puccini's opera Turandot, uh, which I performed uh, in a lot of theaters. This picture was uh, at the Metropolitan Opera. That was uh, Richard Strauss, uh, Die Frau ohne Schatten. And I read that performing at some of these festivals in Europe. Some of them maybe have a stereotype about Americans. They're a little wary of American opera singers. Well, yes. Um, when I went to uh, sing in Bayreuth, which is the big uh, Wagner festival in Germany, and I was fortunate enough to uh, be asked to sing the role of Isolde there in Tristan and Isolde. And as it turned out, I was the first American ever to sing that role in, wow. in Bayreuth. Uh, and I think when I first arrived, they were a little bit nervous because they didn't know if I was going to arrive wearing blue jeans and <laughs> chewing gum or something. And you have traveled so many places. You've performed in all the major cities with all the major operas. And yet you came back to live in South Dakota. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, of course, I, I grew up here. And it's, as you know, a very beautiful area, uh, a very comfortable area in which to live. Um, now, perhaps, uh, I like the winters a little bit less than I did. <laughs> so you retired in, in 94? Right, right. From singing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I sang for 37 years, and um, I had very comfortable success and sang the roles that I wanted to sing uh, and the places that I wanted to sing. But uh, that was part of another life. And I have a couple of uh, avocations here. Next door to my house, uh, I have a dollhouse museum. Wow, this is a Slovenian dollhouse. Yeah, and the German, Irish, French, Scandinavian, English. We get uh, student field trips in here uh, quite often, and so I researched where all the immigrants came to our part of the country from what parts oh. of the world and then recreated some of that so that kids could see how their ancestors lived in the old country. Well, are you up for a question from the ask matic I guess. We'll take we'll our chances. We'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, what is your favorite temperature of water to drink? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, I would say with ice. Yeah. With <laughs> ice, yeah. Whether it's, we have good natural water here, and I enjoy that. And so I drink a lot of water uh, just from the tap. But if I'm going to order water, I want ice. <laughs> Perfect. Johanna, thank you so much for chatting with us. That was wonderful. Well, thank you. Now click on the bike to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. Or click on that red box to watch another episode right now. When you were performing, did you have any rituals or superstitions? Or was there something you do before every performance? Um, not in that sense. Um, I was perhaps somewhat unusual uh, as singers go because I always wanted to have a good dinner before I sang. <laughs> Many singers um, go on uh, hungry and then eat their meal after the performance. But I knew that, uh, especially with the Wagner operas, which I sang a lot of, uh, they're you know up to four hours long and very often your biggest singing is at the end of the opera, and so I needed fuel. And uh, so uh, I always uh, ate a good dinner and uh, um, sang through and then went home and had a cheese sandwich afterwards. <laughs> <laughs>